In the last lecture, we learned about destructuring an array in JavaScript. So, what is destructuring? Destructuring is a special syntax in JavaScript that allows us to unpack arrays or objects into a bunch of variables. We have already seen how to destructure an array in our previous lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talk about destructuring an object. Here, we have a very simple employee object. And this employee object has this name, age, gender, area and work detail property. Now, if we want to assign the value of these properties to a variable, we will have to do something like this. So, we will have to access these properties on the employee object and then we can assign it to a variable. We can achieve this same thing using destructuring but in a more simpler way. So, let's see how to use the destructuring of an object. Here, we have the same employee object which you saw in the slide. Now, what we want is, we want to assign this name property to a variable. Similarly, we also want to assign this age and gender property to two different variables. Now, one way to do this is by accessing these properties on this employee object like this and then assigning it to a variable. So, we can say let name equals employee.name. So, this is one way. But here, we don't want to assign these properties to a variable like this. Instead, we want to destructure this object and then assign these properties to a variable. So, let's remove this line of code from here. And let's see the destructuring syntax for objects. So, to destructure an object, again, first we need to use let or const keyword because that's how we declare a variable. Right. Then, since we are going to destructure an object, here we need to use curly braces like this. So, when we destructure an array, we use square brackets. But when we destructure an object, we use curly braces. And inside this curly braces, we specify the list of variables. Okay. Now, one thing you need to remember here is that the variable name which you will specify inside this, you know, inside this curly braces, must match the property name which you want to assign to that variable. For example, if we want to assign this name property, the value of this name property to a variable, then the variable name must be name. Okay. Similarly, if we want to assign this age property, the value of this age property to a variable, then that variable name must be age. And same goes for gender. Okay, then after this, we use this assignment operator and then we specify the object which we want to destructure. So, here we want to destructure this employee object. And this is the syntax for destructuring an object. Now, if you remember, in the last lecture, we learned that destructuring of an array is based on the element's position. But in case of object, destructuring is based on the reference. So, when we specify the variable name as name, here we are referencing the name property of this employee object. When we say the variable name is age, we are referencing the age property of this employee object. And when we say the variable name is gender, here we are referencing the gender property of this employee object. And based on that, the values will be assigned to these variables. Now, let's go ahead and let's log these variables in the developer console and let's see what they log. Let's save the changes and you can see Steve 28 and mail is logged. So, this name variable stores the value of this name property which is Steve. This age variable stores the value of this age property which is 28. And this gender variable stores the value of this gender property which is mail. And that has been logged in the developer console. Here, in case of destructuring an object, since the order of the element does not matter, we don't need to manually skip elements like we did in the array. So, for example, let's say we only want to have two variables. The first variable should be assigned with the value of this name property and the second variable should be assigned with the value of this gender property. That means we don't want this 
age variable. So we don't need to skip it like this by including two commas. We can simply, you know, write it like this because here we are referencing the property names. So the order of the, you know, the order in which the properties are defined here does not matter. And that's why we can write it like this. All right. Let's get this age variable back. Now, what if we want variable names different from the property names? Well, we can do that, but we still have to reference the property name. Otherwise, JavaScript has no way of knowing what we actually want. Okay, so let's say here for this uh, name variable, instead of having this variable name as name, you want it to be first name. So in order to do that, you still need to reference this name property okay but you can provide an alias for this variable name so we can reference the property by using this name and then we can use colon and then we can specify an alias name so here i want the alias name to be first name okay similarly if you want to provide an alias name for the age you still need to reference this age property by writing it as age and then you can use colon and provide a alias name so let's call it a and same is true for gender also so here for the gender let's provide an alias name g e n and now we can go ahead and log first name age and gender okay so here now we are using the alias name we are logging the alias name let's save the changes and the result should be same okay so we can also provide an alias name for our variables but we still need to reference the property which we want to destructure now what if we specify a variable name inside this object destructuring literal for which we do not have any property for example let's say here i specify another variable name called last name now there is no property called last name inside this employee object so if I go ahead and log this last name, what do you think it will log? Will it throw an error or what will happen? Let's see that. So if I save the changes, you will notice that when I'm logging this last name, it has logged undefined. So when we have a variable name for which a property does not exist in the object which we are destructuring, in that case, by default, it will, it will be assigned with the value undefined. But just like we can set a default value in case of array destructuring, we can do the same thing here as well. So for this last name also, we can set a default value. So let's say the default value is Smith. Okay. So whenever this last name property does not exist for this employee object, in that case, for this last name, this value Smith will be used. If I save the changes, you can notice that now it is logging Smith. But if we have a property with that name, so inside this employee object, if we have this last name property and let's say it is Clark, in that case, this value will be used. So if I save the changes, now it should log Clark and it has. Okay. Inside this employee object, if you notice, we have a property called work details. And this work details property is assigned with an object. Okay, so the value of this work details property is an object. Now, can we destructure this work detail property? In simple terms, can we destructure a nested object? Yes, we can. And to do that, what we need to do is first we need to specify the property name. What is the property name here? It is work details. So let's copy this and let's provide a variable name with this same, you know, same name as the property name. Then we need to use colon. And since we want to destructure a nested object here, we need to use another set of curly braces like this. And inside this, we can specify the property names. So Again, the property name must match with the, I mean, the variable name must match with the property name here. So what is the property name here? It is experience. So first, we need to reference this property name. 
so it is experience now we can go ahead and provide an alias for this so let's call it maybe exp and then we also want to destructure this property company so again the variable name which we will specify must match this property name so let's call it company and again you can also provide an alias for this but i am not going to do that now let's go ahead and let's log this exp and this company and let's see if these two variables are logging the correct result let's save the changes and you can see when we are logging this experience it has logged five and that's the value of this experience property and when we are logging company it has logged google and that's the value of this company property so in this way we can also destructure nested objects okay we can also mutate a variable based on object destructuring let's see what i mean by that let's say we have two variables x and y and the value of x is let's say 110 and the value of y is 120. Now, let's say we also have an object and this object has two properties, x whose value is 10 and y, let's say its value is 20. Okay. Now, what, what I want is, I want to mutate the value of this variable x with the value of this property x and the value of this variable y with the value of this property y of this object so to do that again we can use object destructuring so here again we will use curly braces and we will specify the variable name so x and y now here i have not used this let and let or const keyword why because this x and y are already declared we use let or const keyword before the curly braces or before the square brackets when we are destructuring an array only if the variable names which we are specifying inside the destructuring syntax if it is not already declared but if it is already declared we need not you we need not to use let or const keyword okay so here this x and y is already declared so here we need not to use let or const keyword and then to this let's assign this object now here we will get an error so if i go ahead and save the changes you can see we have an error and this error is because here when we are using this curly braces the curly braces implies a code block in javascript so here javascript thinks that we are trying to assign an object to a code block which is invalid and that's why we have this error and in order to resolve this error we will have to convert this statement into an expression and to do that all we need to do is we simply need to wrap it you know wrap this complete statement inside parenthesis like this and with this this error should be gone okay now let's go ahead and log x and y and let's see if the values of variable x and y has been mutated or not let's save the changes and now you can see when we are logging x and y 10 and 20 has been logged so we have mutated the value of this variable x and y by using object destructuring finally we can also destructure an object returned by a function let's understand this practically so let's go ahead and create an object i mean let's go ahead and create a function and let's call this function maybe return obj and all this function is going to do is it is going to return an anonymous object so let's say this anonymous object has two properties id let's say id is 101 and let's say user name so let's say username is maybe js okay now we want to destructure the object which this function is returning and doing that is very simple again we need to use this object destructuring syntax and inside these curly braces we need to specify the variable names and again variable names must match the property name 
so property names are id and username so the variable name should also be id and username and of course you can provide an alias for that but i'm not going to do that and to this let's assign this return object function okay so return object and let's call this function so when we are calling this return object function it is going to return this object okay so this object will be returned and here in the same line we are also destructuring that object so let's go ahead and let's log id and username and let's see if it is logging the correct value so let's say console.log and let's log id as well as username save the changes and you can see 101 and js has been logged so this is how we can destructure an object returned by a function now let's scroll up and if you notice this employee object has a property called area and this area property is assigned with an array so now what we want is from this employee object we want to destructure this area array and we want to assign its elements to a variable is it possible of course it is and we have learned all the concepts of how to do that so let's see how we can destructure this area object i mean this area array of this employee object so let's scroll down and here we will destructure the nested array of an object so to destructure again let's use this let keyword now which property do we want to destructure we want to destructure this area property so first we need to reference that property so the name of the property is area then we need to use colon and then since we want to destructure this array we know how to destructure it so to destructure an array we use square brackets like this and then we need to provide the variable names to which we want to assign this value and this value so let's say the first variable name is city and the second variable name is country okay and to this let's again assign this employee object so here when we are assigning this employee object to this destructuring syntax here this area property of this employee object will be destructured and since this area is an array this value london will be assigned to city and this value uk will be assigned to this country property i mean this country variable so let's see if that works so let's say console.log and let's log city and country let's save the changes and you can see london and uk has been logged all right so this is all from this lecture in this lecture you learned how to destructure an object 